Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And this is a follow up to my recent channels tutorial in which I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about how exactly to build a Lumakia from scratch using just the motion tools. So let's get to it. So I've made this test project and I will give you a link to it. As you can see, we've got this group containing these three colored circles 100% red, 100% green, 100% blue, over a black solid. Behind it, we've got a cityscape like that. And behind that, we've got this group containing a red checkerboard. So let's come back to here. To create our Luma Kia, we're going to use a color channel mixer on this group. Now I'm going to do this the simple way, first of all, and the simple way is to use the alpha output. So the basic theory of a Lumakia is that we take the brightness values of a color image and then we use that to create a matte for the full color image. And the simplest way to get the brightness values of an image is to average the three channels. I'm going to turn the alpha alpha down to zero and then to average the three channels, we just need to enter 0.33 for each of the red, green and blue. And now we've got the average of the three channels there. And you can see we've actually keyed this over the top of our cityscape. So if I were to turn off my backgrounds and we were to look at the alpha, you can select it from here if you want, you'll notice that each of the three circles are the same shade of grey. And that's kind of all right, but it's not how our eyes perceive colour. So if we turn our channel mixer off and come back to colour, it's very easy to see that the green is by far the brightest thing. The blue is by far the darkest thing and the red is somewhere in the middle. So to do this properly, we actually need to use the Rec 709 coefficients instead of the average. And these are 0.21 to six for red, 0.7152 for green, and 0.0722 for blue. And now if we turn back on our background, that is a more visually accurate Kia. For many practical purposes, you're not really going to notice much difference. But here, for example, is our cityscape image, first as average and here as the coefficients version. And hopefully you can see that in the coefficients version, the sky and the water are slightly more perceptually correct, but it's not a big difference. But we're going to stick with this method. So anyway, we don't actually want to be keying these circles. What we want to do is we want to key our image. So I'm going to turn off that circles group and I'm going to duplicate this group that has my cityscape in it. And I'm going to call one of them key and the other one image. So let's do the same thing with our key group as we've just done, but we're going to do it a slightly different way. We're going to again add a channel mixer and instead of using the alpha output, we are going to turn on the monochrome switch and then we are going to enter our coefficients up here. So again, 0.2126 for red, 0.7152 for green and 0.07 to two for blue. So now we can use this key group to mask our image group. So let's add an image mask to the image group and take the key group and use it as the mask source and switch to luminance. And now you can see if I turn on my group containing my red checkerboard, you can see we're keying our image over the top of the red checkerboard. And we can now manipulate our key very simply by coming to filters and color and threshold. And you can see that if we adjust this threshold value, we can adjust the intensity of the key. So if I increase that threshold value, only the very brightest areas are actually being picked up by the key. As I reduce it, more of the less bright areas are included. So if we actually look at the key, you can see that we're excluding the darkest areas and including the brightest areas. And it's very easy to adjust that and we can adjust the smoothness between them. If we want a very harsh key, we can reduce the smoothness altogether. If we want a nice soft key, which is always preferable really, we want to keep some smoothness in there. So let's turn that off. And there you can see our result. 
If we wanted to blur our key, we can do that very easily by adding a Gaussian blur. So there you go, we're blurring the key. And if we wanted to erode it, we could do that by coming to Stylize and Minmax. And we can erode it like that, or we can switch to Maximum, and that allows us to dilate it. And there's plenty more we can do to post-process this mat, but I won't go into that here because I don't want to overcomplicate things. So in this case, the thing we're most likely to want to do is to replace the sky. So to do that, we can invert the mask. So we've now got the sky transparent and I can just turn on my replacement sky like that. And that's our new version. And the other important thing to point out is that because this is a custom Kia, we can actually control the relative balance of the individual channels that are going into the Kia. And we can be a little bit more selective about the end result. So as you can see in this instance, pulling down the red distinctly improves the result. So this gives us a huge advantage over using the built-in Luma Kia because we've got control over that internal arithmetic. So there you go, we've actually built a Luma Kia very, very simply using the basic motion tools. So I hope that was interesting. Thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.